So I came across this interesting repository the other day called Evil Jinx 2, which sounds like it's spelled like Nginx, but the N is replaced with evil, which is an interesting repository, needless to say, because it's a man in the middle attack framework used for phishing login credentials alongside session cookies, which in turn allows you to bypass two factor authentication. So a lot of things going on in this video. I want to explain everything. This is a educational video. Obviously, this is the disclaimer please do not use this to perform these attacks obviously this is not something I'm promoting I'm just discussing this from an attackers point of view so if you have been a victim of something like this or if you think like you know you want to understand how these attacks are performed I will also cover a few of those steps in this video while showcasing while trying this out how this exactly works Let's start. So it says that it's successor of Evil Jinx released in 2017, which used a custom version of Nginx HTTP server to provide man in the middle functionality to act as a proxy between browser and phished website. Present version is fully written in Go as a standalone application, blah, 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 everything. So let's try to understand what this application is all about, right? What exactly is happening over here? So as usual, let me just spin up a board and let's start talking about what's going on here. Let's say that you as a user go on gmail.com, right? and you try to enter your email, email password and you hit enter, right? So the moment you do this, what's going to happen is that Google, if you have two factor authentication enabled, Google is going to send some sort of OTP or something on your device or some sort of confirmation or something on your device, right? Now, earlier, what used to happen that the phishing attacks were simple. Somebody would create a clone of Gmail like gmailwebsite.com right and they will have a simple form which just post some data to a php backend and they just store your email password in the system it was problematic if they had a two-factor authentication because then what do you do because if you have users email and password you still cannot get into it because it's two-factor authenticated secured it's two, two fa secured right however a framework like this what it allows you to do is even bypass that two fa because this server which is in the middle like this fake server which is there not only does it act as a fake server, but it almost acts as a transparent proxy to it, right? What that means is that the 2FA, which you are giving this website over here. So let's say you are giving your 2FA, your email, password, and 2FA credential, let's say OTP in this case, what it's going to do, it's gonna in the background, do an actual request to Gmail as well. So it's actually acting as a proxy, right? So it's a bad proxy in the center where this whole thing also takes place on the Gmail's end, right? So Gmail also asks you, you know, please enter your email and password. So this server over here enters it in Gmail, the real website on your behalf. Then Gmail says that give me the OTP, right? So Gmail will say that I have sent an OTP on your device. This same thing, this attacker website would give you back. So it's going to give you that back. You will give that screen back to the user. So the user is asked for OTP, just like, you know, how it will work on a normal website. And this is the point when you sum that OTP to this attacker over here. It's going to summon this OTP back to Gmail and Gmail is going to return a valid session, right? So this session over here, I mean, like it's not the best diagrammatic representation, but this session over here would have a cookie, right? And this is exactly what you need. You are not really interested in email password because obviously they cannot be used as a separate thing. You can still brute force it across multiple sites, but this cookie over here is the valuable information because now you can authenticate as that user using their authenticated cookies because Gmail would not ask you, keep asking you 2FA every single time, right? It's a one-time process. So this is exactly what this thing does that instead of creating just a basic simple website, but just has a typical form where you get stuck on this OTP screen or 2FA screen, it performs the full authentication pipeline and it you know, just stores the cookie at the end and it allows you to do something like that. Let's test it out, right? Because why not? So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to head into this releases tab and you can see that at this time 3.3.0 is the latest version which is available and I'll just copy the Linux x64 bit binary as an asset and I'm going to download this on one of the servers which I own. So once I download this, you can see that I have a file.zip over here. Let's just try to unzip this file. And in fact, before I do anything, I just want to do all of this inside a docker container so that you know the blast radius at least is limited so i'm not going to do this on my root system now i'm inside a container 
So if I run this inside a container like this, now I'm in sitting inside an actual container and I can go into my directory and now I can just start doing whatever we were doing. So call this releases tab over here, copy link, output this to file.zip and apt install curl, apt update. All right, so once everything is done, I'm gonna install this. So now you can see that I have these fishlets, redirectors, and evil jinx as files. So if you follow the documentation over here inside the quick start, you can see the first thing we have to do is change this to a 0700 binary permission then you have to run this right so you can see out of the box it just gives me some information unauthorized request redirection url set to this https port dns port auto sort is now enabled all of those things right you're not going to set up like the full-blown phishing machine or something i'm just going to show you how the ui or the interfaces works right so let's follow the documentation again i'm not setting up everything from the very scratch i just want to get something done really quickly so i'm going to copy this configuration over here and i'm gonna copy the ipv4 address for my machine which is gonna be this address right here right so let's enable let's actually set the config domain to be something like the same ip address which we have over here but ssl ip io right so that at least we can access this without getting in trouble then let's enable this as linkedin.sslip.io and it shows us it's not available so let's let's just write fishlets we only have examples so let's just enable that for now it's fine again because i really don't want you to follow along and do something bad so it's better that we just stick to example right then let's just enable enable example all right, so it's trying to get some sort of SSL certificate. I'm not exactly sure what it's trying to do over here. Maybe we should run this with developer flag, right? So that we just use self-signed TLS. So just doing the whole thing again, let's just set the config IPv4 to this. Let's set our domain to this. Let's set the example fish led to this and let's enable this. So now let's create a lure, which is going to be in our case, just for example over here. So it created a lure with ID zero. Let's just list lures. And if I get the URL, this is how it looks right. Right. So now if I go ahead and visit this, you can see that I get a notification that it's not valid because we are running it into developer mode. So obviously it's a self-signed certificate. So that's fine. In reality, you would actually use a, I mean, you would not use it at all because it's so only for an educational video but you can see now that we have entered into like an example thing so again like this is like just the basic landing page which the the creator has yet and again created to enforce selling your course but what you can do probably you can see now all the data that is being entered over here right so again i'm not gonna get into this a lot because again it has a boundary on you know starts to get really evil but you can see there are repositories where are you know fish Fishlets are also available so you can technically download this linkedin.yaml fishlet which is available here once you download it once you configure it it would configure it as a proxy for you know linkedin maybe so the basic idea is from this video what i want to tell you is that first of all how it works it acts like a pure transparent proxy and it records everything in between that's number one even the two-factor authentication so it needs to be an advanced proxy second thing is that the only way you can guarantee or you can assure that you are not falling prey to these attacks is to always 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 verify the domain you are on right so the domain name has to match whatever it is like the gmail.com this https certificate doesn't matter this green card or this tls certificate doesn't matter because this can be obtained by an evil domain also so just connection is secure is not enough the domain name has to match right so that is the only security measure which you have do try this out on your local computer if you want just to play around with this if you want let me know in the comments if you have heard about this tool it's a scary tool uh, for sure and can be used to do a lot of damage in general and you know i would recommend not deploying it in any server or anywhere so that you know you just don't mess around with other people's account but nonetheless you should know like how these hacks are conducted right so that you can protect yourself against it that's all for this one hopefully you learned something new from this video i will see you in the other one really soon